grab your swords, please? Now, Lord, we need revelation, please, from you. Revelation with wisdom and understanding. And you can add some discernment in there, too. And Isaiah chapter 9, please, verse 6. Let's speak it. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be what? No there will be what? No end. No end. In other words... It's timeless. Everyone say the kingdom of God is timeless. So if you're a part of the kingdom of God, are you timeless? Yes. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will what? Perform this. There will be no end, a timeless kingdom created out of time. In other words, but establishing a timeless kingdom in time until time is swallowed up. Now, I know we're going to have to grab hold of this. So we've got an eternal kingdom that God created. He created the eternal kingdom. Does everybody get it? Because he's eternal. It says there's just nothing that was created that wasn't created that was created by him. So he creates this eternal kingdom. And we already talked about time because the Bible says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So the first thing he created was time called beginning because where there's a beginning, there's a end. So God created this eternal kingdom. All right. That was not established in time. Are you hearing me? Now Jesus comes to bring the eternal kingdom in time. Now the eternal kingdom is swallowing up time. Because the kingdom of God is timeless. And it's now swallowing up time. Until the kingdom of God, the timeless kingdom takes over everything. Does everybody understand that? That's why you see chaos everywhere. That's why you see all kinds of things being unstable, shaken. Because the enemy is associated with time, and the kingdom of darkness is associated with time. It's not timeless. They may be angels and fallen angels, but they are not timeless. Is everybody okay? Revelation chapter 1. you see and all the shaking and the quaking is the timeless kingdom of God swallowing up time. And those who are associated with time will be swallowed up with it. But we are timeless and I'll show you why. Glory. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. That means he's timeless. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. And the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us what kings and priests to his to his God and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever 
Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so, amen. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, a timeless king that rules a timeless kingdom. Remember, eternity, eternal, is timeless. Amen? For our peanut brains, it's hard to comprehend these things. Because we've been living and taught and trained. Everything's about time. Everything revolves about time. It's about time we got it. Amen? John chapter 1. Now the word also says that we live and have our being in God. Because he's the holder of all things. In verse 1 it says what? In the beginning, when God created the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That makes it simple enough. Anybody can't comprehend that? I won't go there. Verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was what? Life. Life. And the life was the light of men. Life here is a representation of existence. Is everybody with me? Existence. Where? In this realm. Verse 5. And the light shines in the darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. <laughs> Go to, um, so we see uh, uh, God created. He's the creator of time. And the purpose of a time, why, why did God create time? It is a purpose for his glory. So let's try and unfold this. God is eternal. Was, is, and always will be. He's the holder of all things. Created the universe. Created all things. But even in the universe, there's a beginning and an end. See, he created a beginning and end called time for his purpose. So in this time span, there's a purpose of God. We call God's will. And that purpose was to produce offspring. Does everybody get it? Eternal, timeless offspring. Hallelujah. So the creator of time was to establish a purpose. He's the ruler of time. For a purpose for his glory and create timeless offsprings. To create what? Timeless offsprings. That are born of the spirit, not of the flesh. So the only way to come into this realm was to be born in the flesh. Even Jesus himself had to come in the flesh. The timeless king. Because this realm is bound by time. Its realm is for a purpose of God's purpose for each of his children so that timelessness what we might call eternity is now eating up time and the only thing that will be left are the offsprings that are timeless and the king that is timeless and a kingdom that is timeless everything else will be swallowed up go to verse 10 It says, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them they, he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe, what's the word believe me? Follow. So you can't say you believe and not follow. 
that believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of what? But of God. That makes us a timeless. Everyone say, I'm a spirit. I'm a timeless spirit. See, every one of us is in the spirit, in the flesh suit. Without this flesh suit, you couldn't hang out here. The word spirit means breath. So we are a breath, we are a spirit in this suit. No matter what you look like, big, little, doesn't matter what color hair you have, what color eyes you have, what color skin you have, it's just a flesh suit. But you are a spirit. You are now born of the Spirit, and in you, you are a timeless spirit in a time suit that's going to decay or die. But you will live forever as long as you cooperate. See, there's that area to where people just think, well, I'm saved forever. Oh, no, you ain't, man. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Now, you may live forever in hell, and I don't think anybody wants to do that. Amen? We want to be timeless in heaven and in the kingdom that is timeless. I, we are spirits in the, timeless spirits in the flesh. Amen? In a flesh suit. Does everybody understand that? That's why you groan sometimes within you. Because the Bible says you groan not to be um, because of heartache or whatever. You're growing to be unclothed at the time. You want to become, you want to come out of the time into a timeless realm where you belong. Because that's where we came from. And that's why we want to go back home. And you have to, only way is in the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. He's the only one that paid the price so that you can still live in a time period for a purpose of God, but be timeless and have eternal life. See, so when people keep saying, well, I, mean, I have eternal life, God offers eternal they don't realize the significance of that word. The significance of being eternal means you're timeless. And one day we're going to shed this flesh that holds us here whether we're alive or dead or whatever. But the Bible tells us in the twinkling of an eye, we're, in a twinkling of an eye, we're going to change. And it says death will be swallowed up. Well, death is in this time realm. It's not in the timeless realm where Jesus Christ reigns. Amen? See, one of the things I really believe that the Lord is trying to bring to us is more understanding of who we are and our identity of who we are in Him. Because that's one of the first things the enemy comes to steal is your identity. Compromise your identity. You know, when you and I were growing up, we wanted to be like somebody. Heroes. Wealthy. Famous. Whatever it was. We wanted to be somebody. In fact, everybody, when mo most of our parents told us, you have to be somebody. You need to get an education. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to be somebody. Well, heck, man. The Lord says you already are somebody. You didn't have to prove that to nobody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried in that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. This is after he rose from the dead. Does everybody get it? 500 brethren. You know, he invited them all to the upper room for a while. How many showed up? 120. The rest are the denominations, right? All right. And after you were seen by the 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. In other words, passed away. 
After that, he was given, he was seen by James and then by all the apostles. And at last of all, he was seen by me, who is, this is Paul, as by one born out of due time or born out of time. So Paul was living in time. Now he was born out of time into what? Timelessness. Man, he got revelation like crazy. Does everybody get that? He was born what? Out of time. Into what? A now a timeless realm. Glory. Is everybody all right? <laughs> all right. For, verse 9. For I am least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach and, you, and so you believe. Now, understand the gospel is timeless. Does everybody get it? The word of God is timeless. When Jesus came, his words were timeless. That's why they didn't understand them. Because people of the time realm have a hard time understanding a timeless word. It's eternal. It's never ending. God's words constantly flow. It never stops. They're in movement all the time. He says, I sent my word and it did not return void. So here we see Paul saying, I'm born out of time into a timeless realm. He had the reality of it, the revelation of it. Romans chapter 8. Verse 28. And we know that all, at, that what? All things work to the good to those who what? Love. Now, if you love them, do you obey them? Amen. To those who are called according to his what? Purpose. In other words, when you are called, he means he's invited you into the purpose. Now you must partake and cooperate with his grace, which is God's plan. Amen? Grace, the grace of God is God's plan. That's why the Bible says you're saved by grace, because you're saved by his plan. If you're not following his plan, then you're not saved by grace anymore. Amen? Now you can choose to drift off anything you want. You can go back to your old ways and live your old life. That removes you from the timeless kingdom. Now you're living according to time and not according to timeless. Does everybody get it? See, the word tells us that that's what purifies us because when we, we know when he's revealed, we'll be like him. Amen? Man, that gives us, that purifies us. That gives us hope. That's the end. We already know the end result. We're timeless. We've already died with Christ. We are born again. Birth out of time into timelessness. And verse 29, look what it says. For whom he what? For knew he also predestined to be confirmed, conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, snap. <laughs> he foreknew us. In other words, he knew us before we were. We can't get that. He knew us before we were. <laughs> Again, our predestined is upon cooperation to be conforming to his interest. So many people say, well, if I've been predestined, well, why do I have to do anything? Because you weren't predestined to be an idiot. Hello? And I've heard some people go, well, I'm, if God wanted to be a doctor, I'd, I'd just go take the test. I ain't got to go to college. We'd fail. Because there's certain things to be qualified for. Even the Bible tells us that we're to study and understand the word. Be good stewards. Amen? 
<laughs> Even prophetic words, prophecy. Somebody can prophesy over your life. But if you're not in cooperation with the Spirit, it won't come to pass. And if you've got a stinky attitude, it certainly won't come to pass. I ain't going to receive any of that stuff. And you ain't getting nothing. Amen? Hallelujah. Jeremiah 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, what was he saying? Before I formed you in the womb, I what? Oh, snap. Before I what? Formed you in the womb. Before I sent you from a timeless realm, because you were just spirit, you were just breath. I sent you into a realm of time, a realm of my purpose to produce timeless offsprings. Before I sent you into this realm of time, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. See, we are now prophetic carriers of God's eternal words. Now, there are, the Bible tells us that the testimony of Jesus is a prophetic testimony. Now, there are offices of a prophet. There's gifts of the prophets, of a, uh, gifts of prophecy. Anybody can prophesy by the Spirit of God. Does everybody understand that? You don't have to go to college or cemetery school. Or any of those things. You just got to be led by the Spirit of God. Degrees do not prove you. Hello? The Spirit proves you. Praise God. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. <laughs> before you were born, I sanctified you. I set you apart for me. Just like that song we were singing. We are your children set apart. I ordained you to become a prophetic carrier of my words. Amen? Now, if you're living according to God's will, you are carrying the prophetic words of God. If you're not living according to God's word, you're carrying pathetic words. Amen? Praise God. Remember, I knew you before I formed you and sent you into a realm of his purpose. Why did God create time? For his purpose. That's why he created this whole thing. For his purpose. And what was his purpose? To produce timeless offspring. That's why he chose you. You didn't choose him. You accepted the invitation. You said, yes. Now, you know, it's like going to another country. When you go into another country, you got to learn their language, don't you? There's different traditions. There's certain things. There's rules, regulations. I mean, there are things that you, people go to prison for life for something they didn't even know about what they did. You can speak out against a government somewhere, like you can. You can hear, you know. Of course, I try to put you in jail now, but we ain't really. We really don't have a real government, anyways. It's an antichrist regime. But in that, remember, we are the restrainers of the antichrist regime. Why? Because the antichrist regime is only of the time realm. We are of the timeless realm. Even though there's a spiritual side to it that you can't see, they are not timeless. We are. That's why we are seated in heavenly places. They're not. They're trying to take you from the heavenly place and deceive us. We have dominion over them. But people have to convince themselves of that. That's why we must be refreshed all the time. People see a demon and pass out instead of cast it out. Hallelujah. Isaiah 46, in verse 8.
Remember this, I speak it. Remember this and show yourselves, men. Recall to mind, O oh, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there's none like me. Declare, I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the what? From the beginning, because he's timeless. From ancient times, things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. I will do all my pleasure. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it and will also do it. Oh, hallelujah. Now, of course, the next verse says, Listen to me, you stubborn hearted who are far from my righteousness. I bring my righteousness near. It shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. He says he has purposed it. Amen. Remember, the creation of time is set a place of purpose. It's his purpose. Luke 17 and verse 20. Now, when Jesus, <clears throat> when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is what? Within us. Then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see me, see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here and look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as lightning that flashes out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. Are we in the days of Noah? Amen. Days of Sodom and Gomorrah. So we understand that the kingdom of God is just not an observation, but it's within us. Why? Because it's timeless. That's why you groan to be more clothed with glory and less clothed with this time, this flesh. You can feel it sometimes. Well, man, when you get filled with the Spirit of God, the flesh loves a burst. It's like a, you blow up a balloon. And poof. It's like, yes, finally. Why? Because when you're filled, your flesh is crucified. Amen? It's not carrying that weight. Because you can tell when you're fleshed out. So can everybody else. But just in case you can't tell, somebody else can always tell you. You know, and that's why you always got to be careful because you don't want to skip a day of connect. Amen? So even in your every day, we disconnect from the time realm to get reconnected to the timeless realm. That's what prayer is all about. And if you're not getting disconnected from the time realm and reconnected to the timeless realm, you become carnal. Amen? You miss a day, you sense it. You miss two days, everybody else senses it. Amen? Glory to God. John chapter 6. Jesus was explaining them about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And, and you know, you got to remember they were carnal. But they hung around in the timeless atmosphere, who was Jesus. He could stretch out that timeless atmosphere all around them. He can send them out anywhere. That's why they weren't baptized in the Holy Spirit, but they were still casting out devils, weren't they? Because he expanded his presence over them. And uh, so in this, many of the disciples had a hard time because they couldn't get it. And you want us to eat your flesh and drink your blood? 
they thought that was cannibalistic or some kind of satanic ritual or whatever. And so he says to them, he says, look it. And for, go to verse 60. He said, therefore many of his disciples when they heard this said, this is hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who what? Gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they, who they were and who did not believe, and who would betray them. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Spirit gives eternal, timeless existence in a timeless kingdom that is swallowing up time. What we're seeing right now is the shaking of the coming of the end of time. Does everybody get it? Revelation 12, 7, let's speak it. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan. They're all one. He's a shapeshifter. Who deceives the whole world. He, casts, he was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. Does everybody see that? Now look at The salvation and the strength in the kingdom has come in the power of his Christ. So when Christ came, the kingdom came. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down dismantled and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death why because their temporary life was not important to them they were timeless beings now therefore rejoice O heavens and you who dwell in them but woe w-o-e without eternity whoa to the inhabitants of the earth in the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. So he's a short timer. Amen? He's been out on bail. But he's going to prison for a thousand years soon. I don't know who bailed him out, but he must have got on his own recognizance, I don't know. <laughs> so the devil's time is running out. That's why there's chaos all over the world. Does everybody get it? So he's trying to take down as much as he can before his time is up. His purpose is up. Matthew 6, verse 9. It says, in this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed is your, be your name. Look at this, verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In other words, your, your timeless kingdom come. Come into this realm and take it over. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for all of our debts, sins, trespasses. As we forgive others, debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from e the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. So Jesus was already sharing with them. Look and pray that the timeless kingdom come into this realm. So that this timeless kingdom can now swallow up time. As God's fulfilling his purpose. And producing timeless offspring. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Let's speak it. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly. And the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Which is manifest evident of the righteous judgment of God. That you may be counted what? Worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? The gospel is eternal. It is a timeless gospel. It is a timeless gospel message these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints where in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed therefore we also pray all always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Powerful. That we may be found worthy. Amen? Worthy. Worthy for what? To enter the timeless kingdom and maintain it. Romans 14, 16. Everybody there. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as, as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Wow. Now we're going to close at Revelation 21. You know, after my visitation from the Lord, I realized that I was a new creation in Christ. Old things pass away. And I had to go to court. And uh, I was facing five years in prison and a mandatory sentence. And I kept telling the Lord, I want to go in there and tell him it wasn't me. Because I'm a new creation in Christ. It wasn't me that did it. It's my fingerprints and maybe on video, but it really wasn't me. I mean, but I was convinced that I was a new person, and I knew I was. It wasn't me that did it. He told me, be quiet. You go in there and be quiet. I'll be your judge. I mean, I'll be your attorney. I said, okay. But that was the truth. He said, just don't answer, don't say nothing. So we had a little discussion before I went into the courtroom. I thought, you know, what the heck, it wasn't me. I wanted to prove that I was a new creation, and that God was real. Even though it said behind the judge, in God we trust, of course they don't know who it is. And the Lord said, be quiet. And anyways, I walked out of that courtroom and did two years probation instead of a five-year mandatory prison sentence. See, obedience of keeping your mouth shut sometimes really does help. Revelation 21, verse 1. Glory. Let's speak it. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a loud voice from the heavens saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will, will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Ooh, isn't that going to be awesome? Snap. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. <laughs> then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I'll give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. And he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son and daughters. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall what? Have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Wow. To be timeless being, offsprings of the timeless kingdom and the king, is an honor. Don't let this, don't take it nonchalantly. Know who you are. Does everybody understand that? It doesn't make us better, it makes us more accountable. For much is given, much is required. Amen. Remember, we are battling in a time realm, but we are a timeless warriors. So we are seated in heavenly places, blessed with every spiritual blessing. We have access to everything. We have no excuse. Everything is just cooperate. Submit to God, resist the devil. Amen? Fight. That's where he says, daily deny yourself. You still carry the old dude on, you know? You still carry the old man's character. It's got to be crucified. Only those by led by the Spirit. He wants to draw you from the timeless realm into time. That's why the only thing he can do is attack you from your past. Why? Because your past is no longer timeless. It's in the time realm. Your future is timeless. Amen? So if you live from the future to the present, you have victory every time. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And I pray tonight, Lord, that this revelation of the timeless kingdom and who we are and who we are in you will become a reality to each and every one as we become more and more like you and in your image as more than conquerors. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.